Hi guys, Friday night, April 12, 2019. There's still warning of a flu or Ebola uh, pandemic. Congo's Ebola outbreak might be declared global emergency. And remember the C. auris, which I posted a video on a couple of days ago, deadly germs, lost cures, a mysterious infection spanning the globe in a climate of secrecy, U.S. health officials alarmed by paralyzing illness in kids. U.S. government approves experiment to create a type of bird flu that could kill millions of people. What a fabulous project to be involved in. The National Institutes of Health will allow the viral engineering despite fears. Hey, and we've never had uh, these vials of um, bioweapons disappear in labs. The next pandemic will be arriving shortly. Deadly diseases like Ebola and the avian flu are only one flight away. The U.S. government must start taking preparedness seriously. Oh God, we're due for a flu pandemic. How will it start? And the World Health Organization launches a strategy to fight inevitable global flu pandemic in coming decade. Okay, well, do you think it will be this organic pandemic or do you think it will be unleashed? I think it will be unleashed, like a lot of these mystery illnesses. And then when you talk about the vaccines uh, that are spreading an awful lot of illness, where is all of this coming from? U.S. Biolabs, which I will get into right now after recommending that you watch this video. I didn't know that this video existed. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this link. Here, a real investigative journalist. Those are, uh, well, rare. We don't have them in Western media anymore. We just have mouthpieces for government propaganda. But this woman, wow, courageous. Pentagon bioweapons exposed, and she exposed it. Her name, I can't pronounce her last name, but her first name is um, Liana. She was unjustly terminated from her position at the Bulgarian Trude Daily for exposing Azerbaijan's support for terrorists, reporting that 350 Azerbaijani diplomatic flights carrying weapons for terrorists in Syria shut this woman up, shut her down, terminate her, get rid of her. And guess what? She did a brilliant investigation of our bio labs. 25 Pentagon bio laboratories and they're in Georgia, Ukraine, the Middle East, Africa. The Luger Center is what she concentrated on. The Luger Center in Georgia and she uncovered an awful lot of information that needs to be known. Um, unfortunately now, apparently the only the only media outlet that is posting articles 21st century out of the UK. And well, you'll understand why. Mainstream media is not covering anything that this woman had found. So, I want to remind you of the video that I posted just a couple of days ago, Metal Mosquito Virus Kills Texas Woman. Still, we have not confirmed this. 36-year-old woman gets bitten by a mosquito. She swats it and gets like a razor cut on her hand. The mosquito, she didn't kill it. It flew away. She was dead within like 36, 48 hours. Organs shut down. Her arms were blackened, foaming at the mouth. Okay, CDC comes in, takes the corpse, 
tells the hospital, don't speak about this. Cover up. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people would think that could never happen here. Well, it happens in a lot of places, so why can't it happen here? With the CDC involved in other countries. So, this is a brilliant piece. It's long. It has an awful lot of information. And I'm only going to be covering a fraction of the information. What our military is doing, what our Pentagon, what our CIA, what the CDC and private contractors are doing. Now, she covers the private contractors. She covers an awful lot. And all of these hyperlinks are to more information, documents, up the wazoo. Thank you for real investigative journalism. All right. I'll link below to everything. The Pentagon Bioweapons. This is on uh, Dil Diana, Dilana, Dilana. Sorry. U.S. Army regularly produces deadly viruses, bacteria, and toxins in direct violation of the UN Convention on the Prohibition of Biological Weapons. Hundreds of thousands of unwitting people are systematically exposed to dangerous pathogens and other incurable diseases. These U.S. bio laboratories are funded by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency under a $2.1 billion military program, cooperative biological engagement program, and they're located in former Soviet Union countries like Georgia and Ukraine as well, Africa, Southeast Asia, Middle East. And boy, we have outbreaks of viruses in those areas right by these bio labs. And Georgia is a testing ground for bio weapons. This is the Luger Center in Georgia, close to Tbilisi, and very close to a United States military air base. This is the bio weapons lab. And this is the U.S. military air base. So, all the information you want on the private contractors involved. Everybody has diplomatic immunity. They can do whatever the hell they want in these countries where they have these laboratories. And it's not just Georgia. It's Afghanistan, Armenia, Uganda, Tanzania, Iraq. Vietnam, CIA and Battelle, one of the private contractors, were involved in reconstituting and testing a Soviet-era anthrax bomblet in order to test its dissemination characteristics. I'm going to be focusing on the insects, but aerosols as well. Ha! Huh. The geoengineering, the chemtrails. Well, secret experiments performed by Battelle, assessment of powder dissemination technology, assessment of hazard posed by aerosols, uh, aerosolized toxins, assessment of virulence of uh, meliodosis as a function of aerosol particle in non-human primates, and meliodosis meliodosis has the potential to be developed as a biological weapon. It is a category B bioterrorism agent. Meta, uh, God, metabiota. The reason why I'm just going into these private contractors is to show you what they are doing. Services include global field-based biological threat research, pathogen discovery, outbreak response, and clinical trials. They were contracted by the Pentagon before and during the Ebola crisis in West Africa. They were awarded $3.1 million in between 2012 and 2015 for work in Sierra Leone, one of the countries at the epicenter of the Ebola outbreak. The Ebola outbreak are um, 
Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone. And these little squares, the blue and the green here, are biolabs, transit centers, and hospitals. The green, the biolabs. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Ah, Ebola outbreak. How surprising. July 17, 2014. The Viral hemor Hemorrhagic Fever Consortium accused Metabiota of failing to abide by the existing agreement on how to report test results and for bypassing the Sierra Leonean scientists working there. The report also raised the possibility that Metabiota was culturing blood cells at the lab, something the report said was dangerous as well as misdiagnosing healthy patients in here. The Luger Center, these people, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense, U.S. Department of Defense, uh, Deputy Coordinator for Ebola response. Interesting that we're all involved in this Ebola outbreak that's ongoing in Africa. U.S. contractors and U.S. Uh, Department of Defense employees, and they all smile. Look at them. Yeah, we have a lot of psychopaths. And unfortunately, they're just not only ruling us. They're all over the place. Sorry, anybody who could be involved in this, I, I've i tried to imagine. You know, even if somebody came to me and said, oh, uh, if I was a brilliant, you know, engineer or scientist, uh, Will you come work for us? At the, I couldn't do it. We'll give you $5 million up front. I couldn't do it. Animological warfare is a type of biological warfare that uses insects to transmit diseases. The Pentagon has allegedly performed such entomological tests in Georgia and Russia. A project raising awareness about barcoding of sand flies in Georgia and the Caucasus at the Luger Center, that was a project at the Luger Center, in 2014 throughout 2015, a particular sandfly species was collected under another project, surveillance work on acute vibrial illness. And all the female sandflies were tested to determine their infectivity rate. A third project also including sandflies collection, studied the characteristics of their salivary glands. I want to show you this here. Uh, project name, Surveillance Work on Acute Fibril Illness that was going on at the Luger Center in Georgia. And the project objectives, some of them, active surveillance amongst humans in mentioned districts in order to detect illness in early stages. And a seroprevalence study of uh, a visceral uh, virus in reservoirs, pet dogs, project implementation to collect 500 human and 600 pet dogs blood samples in particular districts. In case of positive test results, the patient or the patient's doctor will be informed immediately. Uh, collection of this sandfly species will be performed as well by CDC standard light traps. CDC involvement, Pentagon, private contractors. They're releasing insects and then collecting all the data. Now think about that video. The CDC themselves stating, how do they do the safety testing of vaccines? It's post-market, which means they don't do safety testing on vaccines prior to putting the vaccine on the market and injecting people with them. They collect the data. They collect the data from 
sources like hospitals. Who ends up in a hospital after receiving a vaccine? Who is reporting on the CDC's uh, VAERS site, the Vaccine Adverse Effects Reporting Site? Doctors. All of those medical records now are, well, on a cloud, accessible to the Pentagon, to the CDC, to collect how many people have been injured and killed by the vaccines. No joke. And then they mandate these vaccines? Alrighty. Well, let's get back into it. Uh, Tbilisi has been infested with biting flies since 2015. These biting insects live indoors in bathrooms all year long, which was not the typical behavior of these species in Georgia previously. How many of you have seen insects when it's really cold? I have what looks like a mosquito, but it's got longer legs, a smaller body, and during the winter when it was really cold, what the hell are they doing inside my apartment? I also, when I posted a video on these biolabs, they, there is mentioned in this article, these um, insects, these I think flies, that are coming out of drains. And I said, this was last year, these very small black what were, appeared to be flies were coming out of my bathroom drain. We're seeing insects living now in very cold weather. Well, guess what? You'll hear right now. Uh, so the typical behavior of these flies in Georgia, uh, it changed after the U.S. put their bio lab there, fly season in Georgia is exceptionally short from June to September. Local people complained of being bitten by these newly appeared flies when naked in the bathroom. They would literally be taking a shower and the flies would be biting them. Now, how many of you know flies that just fly into a shower. Um, they also have a strong resistance to cold and can survive even in the sub-zero temperatures in the mountains. Since the start of the Pentagon project in 2014, well that was, I misspoke. I said when the Luger Center arrived at, um, in Tbilisi, no. It was the start of a Pentagon project in 2014. These flies, similar to those in Georgia, have appeared in neighboring uh, Dagestan, Russia. According to local people, they bite and cause rashes. Their breeding habitats are house drains. Um, 1967 U.S. Army report, Anthropods of Medical Importance in Asia and the European USSR, lists of all local insects, their distribution, and the diseases that they carry, biting flies, which live in drains, are also listed in the document. Their natural habitats, though, are the Philippines, not Georgia or Russia. Operation White Coat infected flies tested to bite humans. 1970, 1972. Sandfly Fever tests were performed on humans, according to a U.S. Army report. U.S. Army activities in the U.S. biological warfare programs. Operation White Coat was a biodefense medical research program carried out by the U.S. Army at Fort Detrick, Maryland, between 1954 and 1973. Despite the official termination of the U.S. bioweapons program under Nixon, it nothing, nothing ends. They just move these programs around. They um, hide the funding. They put the funding through different departments, Department of Energy, wherever. Nothing ends. Killer insects, 
Uh, but listen to this. Um, our U.S. Army performed experiments, performed an experiment if sand flies and mosquitoes could be vectors of Rift Valley virus, dengue, chikungunya, um, I'm, I pronounced that wrong, eastern equine encephalitis. Think about all the horses that have been dying from eastern equine encephalitis. Pentagon has a long history of using insects as vectors, vectors for disease. Um, Zika also will be popping up in a second, but the Pentagon had to kill 625,000 people for just 29 cents. Wow. U.S. Army report, 1981, compared two scenarios, 16 simultaneous attacks on a city by um, uh, Edis, uh, Edis, Egypti mosquitoes, Zika. Those mosquitoes uh, infected with yellow fever and tularemia aerosol attack and assesses their effectiveness in cost and casualties. So remember this woman, right? Plano, Texas. And a woman who works, don't know her capacity, but works at one of the largest county hospitals in Dallas reported that this woman came in after being bitten by a mosquito with flu-like symptoms and then she was put into ICU organs shut down blackened arms alright the reason I'm telling you this is just keep that in the back of your mind and our US bio laboratories are injecting mosquitoes with non-lethal and lethal viruses. Toxic mosquito aerial release system. Aerial release of mosquitoes with unmanned aerial vehicles remotely controlled. The mosquitoes are put into a holding container. They're given a food that's toxic and then they release the mosquito and the mosquito bites people and injects the toxin into them. No joke. Um, capable of delivering lethal and non-lethal toxins. It's quite a patent. Um, again, I'll link below to everything and if you want to know uh, the details, click on the link, read it yourself, but well-known methods of toxin delivery include dispersion affected by using an aerosol spray, explosive, direct food and water contamination. They're doing everything. Everything. Our water is contaminated. Our food is contaminated. Um, they have used explosives in other countries, depleted uranium. But the mosquito, ah, well, that is quite the miracle of technology. They can carry a sickness agent covertly to go to an enemy area, specifically find the individual enemy, and contaminate the enemy with absolutely no warning. This ultra high tech device of nature is called a mosquito. Easily sickened, yeah, it can easily sicken or kill large masses of people. Insects can now be more important than individual immunization or than tanks or laser guided bombs. Individual immunization vaccines. The toxic mosquito aerial release system, large masses of people can be immunized. Um, enemy troops can be wiped out or rendered useless. And guess what? It doesn't cost much and it's easily accomplished. You can contaminate with various types of genetically altered bacteria to activate the sickness agents depending on the objectives. Mosquitoes may be used to deliver an agent such as malaria to create sickness, or they could use much more toxic or highly contagious agents 
or and virus, viruses, a highly contagious virus could wipe out 100% of enemy troops because the ones that did not get bit can be contaminated by other soldiers or civilians. So, doesn't cost much at all. Operation Big Itch. Field tests were performed to determine covered coverage patterns and survivability of the tropical rat flea. Operation Big Buzz. One million Aedes uh, aegypti mosquitoes were produced. One third were placed in munitions and dropped from aircraft or dispersed on the ground. The mosquitoes survived the airdrop and actively sought out human blood. Documents, okay? This is true investigative reporting. Operation Mayday, Adidas, um, Aegypti mosquitoes were dispersed through ground-based methods in Georgia, USA during a U.S. Army operation codenamed Mayday. Document right here. 1981 U.S. Army report. Um, mass production <laughs> of Aedas aegypti mass production of the mosquito. There's been outbreaks of dengue, uh, chikagunya, zika, and diseases that our mainstream media told us that, well, people were carrying the mosquitoes over from uh, Central American and South American countries. You know, Florida, suddenly, oh, we've got a spray for the Zika mosquito. This was released, I'm sorry, it was absolutely released. These mosquitoes were released. I, I... And anybody who could think the U.S. military would not do anything to their own, you are ignorant and very naive. And you need to do the research because our U.S. military has been experimenting on their own troops as well as Americans, us, spraying things, spraying toxins, just to see what would happen to us. And there are so many experiments. I've posted videos, lots of videos on that. But um, so this mosquito, also known as a yellow fever mosquito, widely used in U.S. military operations. The same species of mosquitoes are alleged to be the vectors of Zika that cause genetic malformations in newborns. U.S. Army Chemical Research and Development Command Biological Weapons Branch studied outdoor mosquito biting activity in a number of field tests at Dugway in Utah in 1960. The virgin female mosquito which had been starved, were tested upon troops. Military experiments with tropical mosquitoes and ticks in Georgia, virus and other Arabo viruses in Georgia. That was the name of the project at the uh, at the Luger Center. 2014, the never before seen tropical mosquito mosquito. Um, a different type of mosquito was detected for the first time and after decades, 60 years, the existence of the Adidas aegypti uh, mosquito was confirmed, confirmed in West Georgia. And it just so happens that our bio labs are there, detected in neighboring Russia then and Turkey. Their spread is unusual for this part of the world. Yes, that mosquito had been distributed only in Georgia, southern Russia, northern Turkey, detected for the first time in 2014. Epidemiology and Ecology of Tularemia in Georgia, 2013 to 2016. The Luger Center collected 6,148 ground ticks, then collected 5,871 off of cattle and 1,310 fleas, 731 ticks were caught. Uh, in 2016, a further 21,590 ticks were collected 
and studied at the Luger Center. That number of ticks, that number of fleas, they're looking to release them. These are not being studied. These are the ticks that they're injecting with lethal or non-lethal toxins and they go out and infect other people. Um, anthrax, you know, is a bioweapon weaponized by the U.S. Army in the past and yep, they've got anthrax. There are 34 people infected with Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever in Georgia. Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever is caused by infection through a tick-borne virus. In 2014, 34 people became infected, including a four-year-old child. Three died. Now, you'll see a close-up of this man's blackened arms. The cause of the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever outbreak in Georgia is still unknown. Only one tick from all the collected species from the infected villages tested positive for the disease. Uh, claims of the local authorities that the virus was transmitted to humans from animals. All animal blood samples were negative. Lack of infected ticks and animals is inexplicable given the sharp increase of the human cases of Korean Congo hemorrhagic fever in 2014, meaning the outbreak was not natural and the virus was spread intentionally blackened arms. The woman in Texas had blackened arms. Military biolab playing a blame for deadly outbreak in Afghanistan with the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. 237 cases of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever have also been reported across Afghanistan, 41 of which were fatal. They died in December 2017. Most of the cases have been registered in the capital, Kabul, where 71 cases have been reported with 13 fatality, um, fatalities. In Iran, near the border with Iran, 67 cases. The project in Afghanistan is part of the U.S. Biodefense Program, Cooperative Biological Engagement Program. Pentagon collecting and studying bats. Bats are allegedly the reservoir host to the Ebola virus, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, MERS, and other deadly diseases. Numerous studies have been performed by uh, the Cooperative Biological Engagement Program in a search for deadly pathogens of military importance in bats. Bats blamed for the deadly Ebola outbreak in Africa 2014 through 2016, no conclusive evidence of exactly how the virus jumped to humans has been provided, which raises suspicions of intentional and not natural infection. Engineering deadly viruses is legal in the U.S. MERS is thought to originate from bats and spread directly to humans and or camels. Um, however, like Ebola, the precise ways the virus spreads are unknown. 1,980 cases with 699 deaths were reported in 15 countries across the world. MERS is one of the viruses that have been engineered by the U.S. and studied by the Pentagon as well as influenza and SARS. Confirm confirmation of this practice is Obama's 2014 temporary ban on government funding for such dual-use research. The moratorium was lifted in 2017. Experiments have continued. I'm sorry, I don't believe any of these experiments stop. Um, experiments are legal in the U.S. Uh, such experiments aim to increase the transmissibility or the virulence of pathogens. Uh, Tularemia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these correctly. So, um, yes, the Pentagon has been studying it as a possible um, vector of, it's also known as rabbit fever, sorry, a vector of the bacteria such as ticks and rodents. These highly pathogenic agents have the potential to be weaponized.
Pentagon Bio Laboratory Spread Disease in Ukraine. These are all of the bio laboratories in the Ukraine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. Eleven. And we essentially took over the Ukraine. So, whole lot of very important information. And you can read about and look at the pictures. This woman is rather petite, but boy, kudos. Lots of respect. Lots of courage. Read about the secret experiments at night, the smell of chemicals, the air is laden. This is in the uh, in Georgia, the Luger Center. Local residents complain dangerous chemicals are being secretly burnt at night. Hazardous waste is being emptied into the nearby river. She couldn't get access to the center. She couldn't get an interview with anybody. She was chased out by security. She was stopped by security and asked for her passport. And, um, but she interviewed the residents in the area. And the locals complain of constant headaches, nausea, high blood pressure, dizziness when chemicals are being burnt at night. Uh, there is smoke, black, red, green at night. Or especially early in the morning, like around 3 or 4 a.m. Even the hens have died. They put a big pipe underground and connected it to the drains. This smell comes from there. It smells like rotten eggs and decaying hay. And this woman, I have thyroid disease. There are families of three people in the neighborhood. All three have thyroid disease. They say it's because of the laboratory. Here, um, violet smoke coming out of the lab. Uh, laboratory. At night they let the smoke out so the people don't see. Why at night? Why are they hiding this from us? They have big blue plastic pipes along the street that goes right to the river. And two Filipinos died. Neighbors recall a tragic incident involving four Filipinos who worked at the Luber Center. Two of the foreigners died of, a, of an alleged gas poisoning in their rented flat. The first time when they were called, and this is a quote from a resident, the first time when they were called the emergency service, when they called the emergency service, we were told that they had food poisoning from fish. Now if they got that fish from the local river, that might be true. But the second time, the ambulance came there, foam was coming out of their mouths, they were shouting help, help. When they passed away, they took them away and covered it all up. It all happened again with other. Oh, I'm sorry. It all happened here. Another witness uh, talked of that experience. So, Luger Center, flying the American flag high. You wonder why Americans are hated around the world now? All right. I will link below to everything. There's. Thank you. Um, Diliana, and I'm sorry for butchering your name. Um, yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a country, let's say Russia, opens up a bio laboratory in the United States. They're given complete and utter immunity. They're private contractors, immune from any damage or injury or death that they may have occurred. Um, their, their own health departments like the CDC just coming in and out of our country. You're getting sick from all of the chemicals from this bio laboratory and you have no recourse whatsoever. Well, that's what's happening in 25 countries around the world. But many of us have posted videos on the Ebola outbreak. And there's an awful lot of evidence that Ebola was released from a U.S. bio lab.
All links are below.